All right, I'm here with an updated look at my PlayStation Vita collection, but on top of that, I'm going to also be doing uh, more of a discussion-based video around the Vita. Um, it's no secret that the Vita wasn't exactly a huge success by any means, uh, but I really, really have a great appreciation for the system. I had a, a lot of great times with it, and I think it's a nice piece of hardware, um, especially for its time. I think it's really great. Um, uh, but it was clearly not a success coming off the PSP, which sold over 80 million units, somewhere around that area. Um, although the PSP, of course, everyone knows that uh, it was pretty infamously used for hacking and, and piracy. Uh, so the attach rate for actually people buying games for the PSP was abysmal. So um, coming off of that, uh, I've always noticed with the Vita is because the firmware is very, very, um, I guess for the lack of a better term, strict. Uh, it took years for people to crack the Vita and actually be able to pack it. And even to this day, Sony's so stubborn with this thing that they <laughs> will not um, do anything. Like they'll still put up updates on the store to like, so that uh, you can't hack it. It's, it's crazy. It's, um, so they definitely didn't want to see a repeat of that, but also the Vita did not really see great worldwide success. It's also moderate success in Japan, but um wasn't so great. But this is my Vita here. This is the white one that came with Assassin's Creed Liberation, I believe is the title of the name, title of the game. Uh, and I think this is a really great piece of hardware. Uh, my PS4 is also the white model that came with Destiny. Uh, so I thought it was really nice that they matched. I bought this thing on eBay. Uh, it came with like a game. I can't remember how much it was. I bought it in 2014. Um, so a couple years after the Vita had come out and pretty much once it was set in stone, the Vita was not going to be a success. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, it has a D-pad, pretty serviceable D-pad, uh, two sticks. Um, this is the home button. Uh, there's a camera up here. Let's get this to focus. Uh, the classic uh, symbols and start and select buttons down here as well as, you know, speakers and everything. Um, try not to get the glare. On the reverse, of course, I'll, I should probably go over the top. Um, this here, I got the L and R buttons. Power button. This is where you put the cartridges. This, I don't know what this ever was supposed to be used for, honestly. Um, if anyone's aware of what this was supposed to be used for, this is a weird port. I don't think ever got used for anything. And then there's the volume buttons as well. I think this thing's a great piece of hardware, especially for when it came out. Also on the back, there is a back touchpad, um, kind of a stupid, worthless gimmick uh, that not many games ended up really using, but it's there. You can use that back touchpad if if you so desire. Um, seemed like a kind of poor choice. And there's also a camera on the back as well, you can see. Um, uh, but the Vita came out in 20, uh, late 2011, in, I think December 2011 in Japan, and uh, February 2012 in the United States. Uh, so, in the United States, it came out about almost a year after the 3DS came out. Um, and the 3DS had already kind of gone through its growing pains phase where that thing was not doing so well, if you guys remember the first year. Uh, so, we, but it started really picking back up in once they dropped that price, if you remember, it was 250 when the 3DS originally came out, which is kind of crazy for a a handheld, but they dropped that price pretty fast and uh, got Mario Kart 7 and Mario 3D World out, and that thing was off to the races, and the Vita never really caught up. Um, but I think hardware-wise, this might be unpopular for some people, especially since I have a, a channel that caters to a lot of Nintendo fans, and I'm a big Nintendo fan myself, but hardware-wise, the Vita is, I mean, leaps and bounds better than the 3DS in pretty much every way. Um, the screen is nice, I believe. It is um, 540p resolution. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, the original model I have here is OLED, uh, so the display looks great, and it looks really crisp, especially since it is so small, since it's such a small screen. Um, the 3DS only did 240p and uh, was not nearly as powerful. And uh, the Vina had a problem um, where it was just kind of there, I guess. Sony stopped caring about it pretty quick um, once it was seen. And then Sony seems to do this a lot with the different hardware that doesn't pan out as they wished. 
Uh, but once it seemed like the Vita wasn't going to go anywhere, uh, Sony pretty quickly dropped the thing, which is a shame because I think it's a great piece of hardware. Um, and it has a pretty decent library for what it is and the amount of support it got because it stopped getting uh, the last big AAA f um, game that Sony put out was Freedom Wars, which is kind of like Monster Hunter for lack of a better comparison. I have it in my collection. We'll get to it. So, um, but I mean, obviously Vita had a lot of problems uh, with selling. Uh, the biggest thing that killed it is that Sony kind of got greedy with wanting to have their own proprietary memory. Um, the 3DS used uh, SD cards and later micro SD cards for the new 3DS. And the Vita has their own proprietary memory cards down here at the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to pull it out because I don't know if it's going to mess anything up. Um, and they were expensive. They were extremely expensive. Um, the prices were crazy. So it was just people got scared off by that. The Vita already was not the most cheap system and the, the memory card prices were just insane. So that's kind of one of the biggest problems this thing had. Um, just also Sony just, what, the PS4 started taking off and they kind of just never looked back at the poor Vita. Um, but we'll go over the interface a little bit on here. Uh, kind of like a phone. Swipe down to go. And you got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of useless stuff here, I guess, pretty much. The store, I guess, and friends and trophies. Um, just a lot of stuff I never used. Near was kind of like their, their street pass equivalent that never caught on. Um, you can put music on here if you really wish. Take photos. Um, got your games here. And I always thought that one of the Vita's strongest points was that you could get uh, PS1 Classics. Sorry. You could download pretty much every PSP game that was on the PS PSN store for PSP. So you could have PSP games like Persona 3 Portable. Um, but you could also get Mega Man X4 or uh, Tron Bone through the, uh, through the PlayStation store with the PlayStation Classics. Um, whatever, pretty much all the same PS classics that were on the PS3 were also on the Vita. Um, and which is weird because PS4 does not have PS1 classics, but I thought that was always a nice way, uh, play something like Symphony of the Night or, uh, Metal Gear Solid on the go. Um, Vita also excelled pretty greatly in, uh, indie software. You can see I have Undertale on here, uh, as well as a lot of other great indie games of the time were on the system. It really excelled in getting indie support and indie games still supported it for a while. Some still do even um, because there was a, a dedicated uh, user base there that really, really wanted to play games on their Vita. And I think it's a great platform. I think it's a great handheld and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so I'll give my final verdict at the end, whether or not I think the system's dead, whether or not I recommend picking one up in 2017, but let's go through my collection here. Uh, starting off with the game that this system came with, it was a bundle with Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. Uh, I'm not a huge Assassin's Creed guy. Um, so I think you can play this now on the Assassin's Creed. They ported it to like PS4, Assassin's Creed 3, and I think they put that game in there. So there is a console version now. Uh, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. This is still sealed. I found this in a Kmart for $4 when they were, Kmart was getting rid of their clearance, clearancing out all their games. Uh, this is supposed to be a Metroidvania, which is kind of neat, but unfortunately I've not heard the best things about the quality of the game. Um, a series that I really like on this platform, uh, the Danganronpa series. Uh, this is the first game, Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Um which came out originally for the PSP somewhere in uh, around 2009, 2010-ish. Uh, the first two games here we got here as well, uh, Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Uh, those both came out around that time for the PSP. Uh, kind of got a niche cult following over there in Japan. Um, the big thing that really brought it over here was the website Something Awful did a uh, fan translation of the game. And it got a really big following online. And eventually, NIS localized the games and brought them over. And uh, they've been having a pretty dedicated fan base ever since. Uh, they're now on the PS4. You can get the trilogy on there as well, uh, which includes Danganronpa V3, which I would say is the best one. This one came out in 2017, so quite a bit after 
the original games. Um, but this is a really great series. It's a really great mystery visual novel series. Uh, I don't want to give too much away about it because I think just going in blind is the best possible way to experience them. But I think those games are awesome. Of course, there's always a dud. Uh, this is Danganronpa Ultra, Ultra Despair Girls. Danganronpa, another episode. This is like a weird shooter almost, and it is not good. Um, but doesn't really have any massive implications on the Danganronpa lore that I care about, at least. So you can probably skip that one. It's also on PS4, and they're all on... All these games are also on Steam and, and PS4, where they've continued to build their audience. But uh, myself and a lot of people included will probably consider them to be Vita games, first and foremost. Uh, we got here another game, uh, Dragon's Crown, which is published by Atlas, developed by Vanillaware, who also did um, Odin's Fear and uh, Miramasa the Demon Blade. Um, they're always, they have a very distinct art style about their games, and uh, I think they're pretty cool. And this one's pretty good. I like this one. Uh, one other thing that PS Vita was um, pretty known for uh, was it was really the first time that we could play console games competently on a with a pretty good HD port on a handheld. Uh, so, I mean, we had on the 3DS, we had stuff like Metal Gear Solid 3D, and even on the DS, we had uh, Resident Evil Deadly Silence, which is a remake of the first Resident Evil game. But this was the first time we were getting, you know, console quality uh, ports on a handheld. And um, we got here Final Fantasy X and X-2 HD remaster. I own this game several times over. Uh, I really like Final Fantasy X. Um, and my weirdest thing is I've never really put much time into Final Fantasy X-2, which is crazy because Final Fantasy X is one of my favorite Final Fantasies. And... Um, I don't know. People like 10 2's battle system and everything, but I've just never really given it a fair shake. Um, but this is a good, this is a good way to play Final Fantasy 10 on the go. 10 2 unfortunately comes on a, on a code, a download code. So if you pick up a used copy, you're probably not getting 10 2. Only 10 is on the cart, but it's nice to be able to have these games on the go. This is one I got for cheap on a, at a pawn shop. I'm not a huge fan of this series, but it's kind of neat to have on the Vita. Um, Dynasty Warriors next. Uh, I'm not a big Muso guy, but it's neat to have these games on the go. Um, we got here, like I mentioned earlier, Freedom Wars. This is still sealed. I got it for on Black Friday, maybe th three or four years ago for $5. Um, I'm not a big Monster Hunter guy, but uh, this kind of what this is, kind of like a grindy quest-based game. Um, a lot of people really like it. I think it still has a pretty dedicated fan base that still play the game today. And uh, I've heard great things. It's just not really my thing. But this technically was the last big g game to come out for the Vita uh, from uh, Sony's Japan studio. So noteworthy uh, addition to the Vita lineup. Uh, Gravity Rush, which I know this is a very beloved game. I'm not hot on it. I think the controls are a little bit weird. Um, but... It's definitely really one of the first games I played on my Vita, and I was pretty impressed with just the fact that I'm playing this game on a handheld. I thought that was really cool. Another console port here. Uh, oh, this is not the game I was thinking of. This came with my, in the eBay listing. This came in my, I guess maybe it is a console port. I'm not for sure what version of the game this is. This came with my console on eBay, um, Lego Batman 2. I have not played this version of Lego Batman 2. I played the console one. It's a Lego game. It's fun. I had not played this version. This is another console port. Uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, Criterion Games de developed this one. Uh, who's mostly known for Burnout. Um, but yeah, I mean, Vita always had pretty impressive console ports um, to it. And it is pretty cool that uh, EA was willing to support it with such a big game. We got here Odin's Fear. Uh, I believe it's Leaf Tizer. I'm going to go with that. This is still sealed. I played the PS2 one, and I, I figured I'd pick this up, but I have not gotten to this version. Um, but a cool game from what I played on the PS2 one. Um, we got here my favorite game on the system. Um, 
Persona 4 Golden, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Persona 5 is my favorite RPG of all time, uh, but Golden 4 Golden is definitely up there. This game's stellar. This is the best game on the Vita, and it is if you're a JRPG fan, um, this game, and you've never somehow played this game, um, I know this series is really blown up in recent years, but if you're a JRPG fan and never played this game, it's worth play, buying a Vita just for this. Um, this is an enhanced port of Atlas's 2008 PS2 game Persona 4 um, with new content, new characters, um, and new lines of dialogue and events and everything. And it's spectacular. It's a great game. Uh, I really admire the series. Uh, that was my first, that was my jumping on point for the Persona series. And I really admire the series, how it, um, how well the story's written, how well the characters are written, um, how all the gameplay melds together perfectly everything intertwines perfectly it's just it's stellar um and that gets my highest recommendations we got here persona 4 dancing all night which is a rhythm game uh focusing around uh, persona music uh this one i really liked on the vita uh, i replayed it recently uh because they did a pack that came with persona 3 and persona 5 dancing games and then they included a PS4 version of uh, the 4 dancing game. And I definitely think it doesn't hold up as well as the newer games did. And the set list is not as good as the newer games, uh, dancing games. But what I really like about it is the gameplay is fun, of course. But I really like games like that. And they did it with like Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy and Theater Rhythm Dragon Quest. Uh, I think there should be more games where that are rhythm games that just honor the a, a, you know beloved franchise's music. I mean, imagine like a Smash Brothers um, rhythm game that takes a bunch of the music from all these different series and, and you can do it like that. Maybe that's just me, but I think that'd be awesome. That's one of my biggest wishes. I just, I really like rhythm games. I think they're a lot of fun. There was a period of my life I played only Guitar Hero and Rock Band for like maybe over a year, almost two years. Um, so maybe that's it. But I would love to see more games dedicate a whole you know rhythm experience, even if it's just a $10, $20 download just to their, you know, song libraries. I think that'd be really cool. And we don't get to see that enough. Uh, that's my rant of the day. Um, back to the collection. We got here Sly Cooper HD collection. These games are pretty fun. I played uh, the first one on PS2. And um, this is a cool library to have on your Vita. Unfortunately, the Sly Cooper 3 on here is a digital download. And I got this used, so I think at a pawn shot maybe. So I do not have that. And unfortunately as well, some of these games, like this one, and I think the God of War uh, collection on the Vita, have a game that is a download. And some of those download codes expire in like the early 2020s, which is really, really weird. I don't know why they do that, but uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. And if you have any of these games sealed uh, and you have an intention of playing them one day, I'd maybe pop them open and redeem that code so you, you one day when you want to play them um you don't end up getting screwed like that but that is really unfortunate and uh i wish uh, that wasn't the case we got here tearaway um this is a game by media molecule who did little big planet and i'm gonna be honest honest i hate little big planet uh but this game is really fun this game's really charming it's really fun it has a unique art style and it's just a really a joy to play one of the better vita games and they ported it to ps4 as well um, so that one gets my recommendation. Uh, we got two more here that gets my full recommendation. Um, if you, especially if you like JRPGs like myself, um, and you've never tried this series out. If you recently, if you've been following the channel recently, I did a, um, underrated games video and I included, uh, the legend of heroes trails of cold steel. And this is its sequel. The third one just came out, um, for PS4, but you cannot play it on Vita. Uh, these games are awesome. Um, you get a lot of the comparison. It's like Persona 4 meets Suikoden, which I'd say is probably pretty apt, but not quite. Um, but definitely worth checking out. Great, great JRPGs. They're also on PS3. And I've, they've just ported them to PS4 as well. But you can't really go wrong wherever you play them. I think the PS3 versions are on PlayStation Now, too, if you're subscribed to that. If you want to, you know, want to play them without having to put any money into them. Um, next up, we got here another console port. This is what I thought it was earlier when I saw, um, <clears throat> when I saw Lego Batman, uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which was a launch title for the Vita. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite 
fighting games. Um, this game's a great. Uh, I'm not a huge hardcore fighting game fan, so um, this version of the game is fine by me. This is the only version I ever played of Ultimate, at least, and I think this game's awesome. And it's really great to have on the Vita. Uh, I remember I just you know mess around with it, do a couple story modes or arcade modes or whatever they called it <coughs> while I'm watching TV or doing something in the background and had a great time with it. I think that's a great console uh, port to the Vita. Uncharted Golden Abyss, uh, which is pretty impressive for a Vita game. This was a launch title, uh, and I think Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom was as well. Um, but this was a launch title um, developed by Sony Bend, not Naughty Dog. Sony Bend recently did uh, Days Gone for the PS4. And it's impressive for a Vita game. It's not the best Uncharted game by any means. But uh, if you're an Uncharted fan and you want to check this game out, go ahead because you're not going to go wrong with it. It's more along the lines of like Uncharted 1, though, than it is, you know, Uncharted 3 or 4, which I think are the, the best of them. And 2 is, of course, great as well. <clears throat> uh, we got here World of Final Fantasy. Uh, this is still sealed. I got it for cheap and just haven't checked it out. Uh, they put out a new version on the Switch, like an enhanced version. So, But uh, this is like kind of just a little game. You have like chibi versions of all the different Final Fantasy characters, and it's an RPG. And then finally here I got um, Ease, Memories of Salsetta. This is Ease 8, I think. Because we're on Ease 9 now. Or is this just... This one's not numbered. Okay. Oh, Ease 8 just came out, so this might be Ease 7. Um, I have not played it. I've heard good things about the Ease series, and I'd like to hop into it, but I have not checked it out yet, um, unfortunately. Um, so before I wrap this video up, I kind of want to give my thoughts on whether or not the Vita is worth it in 20, uh, 2019. And it depends, really, what your situation is. If you want to play some of the great games on here, a lot of the games have been ported. Uh, Danganronpa games, I've mentioned, those got ported. Um, you know, Tearaway got ported. Uh, there's very few games. Gravity Rush got ported. There's very few games that aren't console ports that were already on PS3 or 360. Or games that haven't been ported to PS4, you know, Jumping Ship. Um, Persona 4 Golden, I can't believe that game's still stranded on Vita. Uh, I can't believe they didn't port that to PS4 or Switch or something, but it's still there. It's still worth playing. I think it's great. Um, it depends. If you can get a good Vita on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace um, for maybe 60, 70 bucks, I'd say jump in if, if it's a library that interests you. Uh, the games are pretty cheap to grab right now, and there's still a lot of great uh, collections on there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of merit to being able, I don't have a copy of it, but there's a Metal Gear Solid HD collection with two and three on there. And I think there's a lot of merit to be able to play those games uh, portably. Um, that's where my next point comes in. A lot of games now are on Switch. You know, this this Vita used to be a pretty big indie game console, but now the Switch has kind of taken over that. And uh, I think the Switch is a better piece of hardware, which makes sense because it came out, you know, six years after the, the Vita. Um, so I don't know. I feel like for me, at least I have not played my Vita as much lately because I feel that the switch has kind of taken over that for me. And, um, that's something to consider as well, but I really liked the Vita. I still continue to like it. Um, even if I feel that I'm not playing it as much since the, the switch is now kind of taken that place. Uh, but there's definitely a great catalog of games to go back to. There's still a bunch of games that I even have in my collection that I want to go and play. There's still plenty I want to grab for the collection. So overall, I'd say if you can get a cheap Vita, make sure it has, a, when you're buying, make sure it has some sort of memory card with it. Uh, definitely don't <laughs> pay top dollar for a Vita and then realize that you don't have any way to save your games. Um, but I'd say that it's worth giving the Vita a shot. I think it's a really great system that does not get enough appreciation. And that's kind of what this video was. I just wanted to kind of give appreciation to a system that doesn't get enough. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below uh, with some of your favorite Vita games, um, some of your experience with the Vita. If you ever bought a Vita, if you didn't have a Vita, uh, but you're interested in the Vita, let me know. I'll take any questions as well. If you have any Vita-related questions or any, any questions, really, uh, let me know um, in the comments below. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Follow me on Twitter, at Um and I will see you next time.